Hello makers, I'm Sophia from Love Crafts and today I'm going to help you get started with punch needle embroidery. In this video we'll cover the essential punch needle tools, materials and a beginner project you can make to kickstart your new crafty adventure. Starting off with our tools, we've got some dressmaking scissors. Now these are a must have for any crafter's stash and they're particularly used for cutting fabrics. Now you wouldn't use them for anything else, otherwise you may damage its blades. Next up we've got these cute little embroidery scissors. These have a shorter blade and they can be used for snipping yarn threads as you embroider along and they're perfect for those finer details of your work. Tapestry needles are great for finishing or tidying up your punch needle projects. As you can see here, they're not your typical sewing needles. They come with a larger eye and a blunt end and they're great for threading up those yarns. Don't forget to check the links in the description below for some of these tools. Now with any punch needle project, you want to make sure that the base fabric you're working on is nice and tight. This is so that your punch needle glides through your fabric with ease. You can either stretch your fabric onto an embroidery hoop or pin or staple it onto an embroidery frame. Now the brands don't really matter as long as they're wood because the wood really helps the fabric grasp onto the frames, which means they're less likely to slip off your frame as you work along so you're not having to reframe it all the time. Let's talk about punch needles. Usually when you're purchasing a punch needle, the description will tell you what yarn weights will be appropriate for them. So the different thicknesses of needles require different thicknesses of yarn. Another difference is that some are blunt, usually the thicker needles for looser woven fabrics. Some are sharp, usually the finer needles to get through tighter woven fabrics. And I'll be going over fabrics in the next part of the video. Some you can adjust to your desired length. So the longer the needle, the larger the loops of your embroidery. Just be aware that if the length of the needle is too short, your stitches may not hold. Just stick around for the rest of the video because I'm gonna be showing you how to use one of these jazzy needles. Typically with punch needle, you'll want to use fabric that have an open weave. And this means it has been constructed in a way that there are many holes between the warp threads. And this allows for the punch needle to slide into these spaces without creating massive rips or holes in the fabric. These looser weave fabrics sometimes come with something called a thread count in the description. And this counts how many holes per inch there are on the fabric. The larger or looser the weave, the fewer holes per inch there will be and the thicker you can go with your yarns and your punch needles. So the favorites for beginners are monk's cloth. And this is my personal favorite. It's great because you can make mistakes and you can undo your stitches very easily. Another is rustic linens, which is quite similar to burlap. It has a great feel and as we mentioned before, has many holes in its surface. And these ones are great for Aran up to super chunky weight yarn. Now, if I take a thick needle and demonstrate and put it through the fabrics, you will see what I mean. So I put it through the fabric and it seems to have made a hole, but it goes back to original shape. And this is because the warp threads have made space for the needle to go through. And the same with the monk's cloth. No hole. Once you become more confident with punch needling and want to challenge yourself, you can use finer punch needles with finer threads and yarns. Now, typically with finer punch needles, you can get away with using a whole range of tighter woven fabrics from cotton canvas, for example, like this one, which has a much tighter open weave. And if I put my needle through, you can see that there's no hole. You can even use standard plain weave fabrics like this cotton calico, and again, There's no hole. Now my tip is to experiment with different needles, yarns, fabrics to find the right one for you and the projects you want to do. They all depend on each other and from personal experience a little trial and error will get you where you want to be. 
Now we're going to have a look at what yarns to use for your punch needle embroidery. The Lovecrafts website has an incredible range of yarns in different textures, weights and fabulous colours you can choose from. Technically you can explore lots of different yarns for punch needle but the ones that tend to work best are those with a rough or hairy texture as opposed to a silky slippery texture so that the stitches grip better onto the fabric you're embroidering. Wool yarn is amongst the favourites for its natural hairy texture as you can see here with this paint box wool worsted yarn. Alternatively, you can look at a wool mix like this gorgeous squidgy Debbie Bliss yarn, which is a wool and acrylic mix. If you're looking for something more affordable, 100% acrylic yarns are a great option, like this paint box simply chunky yarn. Acrylic yarns have similar properties to wool in terms of their hairy fuzzy texture. Cotton yarn is another punch needle favourite for its strong and durable fibres like this paint box cotton DK. It has a nice rough texture perfect for those tight punch needle stitches. Transferring materials are essential for transferring your designs onto your fabrics ready for embroidering. Remember to check the description below for some of the materials I've shown in the whole of this video. Now pencils and markers, either permanent markers or water erasable markers, are used if you want to draw freely straight onto the fabric or if you want to trace a design in front of a light source. Now heat transfer pens like this one are used to trace your designs onto tracing paper which is then transferred onto your fabric with heat from an iron and this is typically used for designs that are more detailed. Now that you're more familiar with the essential tools and materials for punch needle, I'm going to go through this amazing kit by hole punching that you may want to craft for your very first project. You could click on the pop-up card on your screen now to purchase the kit right away. Shall we take a look at what's inside? So to start off this fun project, I have stretched my fabric nice and tightly onto the embroidery hoop and now I'm going to transfer my design template onto the fabric. So I'm going to place it behind the fabric like so. And you can see the design already coming through the fabric there. And now I'm going to go off and trace it against the light source with a marker pen. So now that I've finished transferring my beautiful abstract flower onto my fabric, I'm going to be showing you how to thread your punch needle. Now to do this you're going to use your wire threader which comes with every punch needle that you buy and you're going to put it through the eye of the needle here. And the easiest way to do this is to stick your finger behind the needle which covers the bigger hole at the back, like so. And you're going to take the loop end of your wire and put it through that eye, like so. And you're going to push all the way through until the wire comes out the other end. And there it is. And now you're going to put your first yarn colour through that loop. like so and to finish threading up your needle you're going to pull the end of the wire here and pull all the way through until your yarn comes out the other end at the eye and there it is So now I'm ready to start embroidering my design and I'm going to start with the smaller sections of my design, so the little petals as opposed to starting with the whole background. Now a top tip before you start embroidering, you want to make sure that there is no tension in your needle as you're embroidering. So you're going to want to unravel yarn from your yarn ball and you're going to want to do this as you embroider along as you use more and more of the yarn. And this ensures that your stitches stay nice and tight and even and they don't come out of the fabric. Now to start stitching my design, I'm going to put my needle through the outline of the first section of my design like so. 
And now I'm gonna have this yarn tail, so I need to transfer it to the back. So if I turn my work, I can pull it through here, like so. Turn again. Now to make my first stitch, I need to bring my needle up from the fabric, ensuring that the tip of the needle is nice and close at the surface of the fabric. And as you're embroidering along, you want to make sure that the larger hole of your needle is facing away from you or towards the way you're about to punch. So to make your first stitch, you're gonna take your needle and put it through the next section of your outline like so. And you're gonna bring it up again. And the next section, you're gonna bring it up again. Remember to leave the tip nice and close to the surface of the fabric. And you're gonna punch the next section. And the next section. Now you can see here that my stitches are nice and even, so you want to be consistent as you're embroidering along. So now I'm gonna finish punching the outline. Once I've finished punching this outline and I reach my initial first stitch, I'm just gonna continue punching beside those outline stitches, nice and close beside them, like so. And I'm gonna continue this process until the whole of the section of this design has been filled. So I punched my last stitch and now I need to finish off. And to do this, I'm gonna keep the needle in the fabric. I'm gonna turn my work to the lovely loopy side. And next, I'm gonna pull my yarn through the eye of the needle. So the small hole of the needle like so. And to finish off, I'm going to snip the loop with some embroidery scissors. and I can pull my needle right out of the fabric. And there you are. So now I'm gonna repeat this process for all the sections of the design, including the background to finish my work. And here are my finished stitches. 
Now there's no right or wrong side when it comes to punch needle embroidery. So the loopy side of your fabric can be just as beautiful as the flat stitch side. Let's take a look. If you choose the loopy side to be the front of your embroidery, you'll need to do some tidying up. So I'm going to trim these yarn ends with my embroidery scissors. Next, I'm going to tidy and separate the loops where the different colours meet using a tapestry needle so that the flower petals are more pronounced and neat. I'm just going to tidy up this petal for you to see as I'm actually choosing this side to be the back of my work so I won't need to tidy up the rest. So you take your tapestry needle and you literally separate the two colours like so. Some of the loops can be tangled, so you just take your tapestry needle and separate them. And there you are. You can see the lines are much neater if you compare it to the other petals. I'm finally ready to finish my hoop to hang on the wall. Now for extra peace of mind, you can paint some PVA glue onto the back of your embroidery, but this is not essential. If you're making a project that you'll want to wash by hand, you can use washable fabric glue instead. Now I'm gonna trim the excess fabric all around the hoop and glue it back so that it's not visible. I then also like to finish the back of my embroidery hoops with some felt fabric. And just like that, I created an adorable mini work of art. You'll be happy to know the Lovecrafts website has some other amazing free punch needle tutorials you can make. Learn how to make this mindful punch needle pillowcase. The perfect project if you're looking to unwind in the comfort of your own home. Explore beautiful colours and textures with this punch needle trio. Or try your hand at some impressive geometry with this punch needle frame. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this beginner's guide to punch needle embroidery. I'd love to know how you get on so leave a comment down below and let me know what will be your first punch needle project. Happy making!